I told you that I have something for you to do that will only take a few moments, that can be done in almost any situation, that will have you releasing oxytocin into your bloodstream, the gorgeous love hormone. It will reduce cortisol, the stress hormone. It's going to relieve anxiety, increase your happiness mood, have you live longer. It's a natural antidepressant because it stimulates serotonin. It will have you feeling stronger and more energetic and that this one little thing you can do will have you helping hundreds of others to also feel this. Welcome to Love Life, featuring your host, Jane Donovan. The sun shines bright as it moves across my face. I feel the light. Hi, welcome to Love Life. I'm Jane Donovan, and today I'm answering a listener's email that is around a topic that I've been wanting to share with you for a while. So here's the email. Hi, Jane. I really struggle to get everything done. This is happening almost daily at my work and combined with raising two young boys, supporting my husband in his business and keeping a home running. I feel I need some help. I'm an organized person, however, I feel like I'm failing and not getting everything done I want to, whether that's for my boss, my children, and my husband, and that I should be able to do all of these things. Would love your advice, Mary. Many of us have experienced times in our life of great independence, or we have people in our lives that are fiercely independent and won't let us help them at all. It can be a flip-sided thing. On one hand, if you're somebody that is wanting to help somebody, it's really frustrating when they don't let you, when you really have a heart-centered desire to want to help. On the reverse side, if you are fiercely independent or you have all sorts of emotions around asking other people to help you, it can be really debilitating if you really haven't got the art of asking people to help you. So to answer this person's email, I want to go into the art of receiving and why this is so incredibly important for each of us to not just master but deliberately create an environment where others can be of assistance to us. So let's look first at the fear around asking others for help. It can be many different things but perhaps for somebody it might be if I have to ask for help it means I'm a failure, it means I'm not good enough. It means that I should be able to do all of these things, and yet I'm not. Why can't I? What's wrong with me? Everybody else seems able to do all of these high standards that everybody has running around in life. Why can't I be that person as well? Or perhaps it's, I don't want to ask somebody because I don't want to be a burden. They're busy. They've got their own lives going on. And I know that people will say yes and that they will help me. But what if they resent that? What if they resent me because I've asked for help and they feel like they have to say yes? Or what if there are somebody that's a people pleaser and they can't say no? And therefore, I'm really imposing on them even more. So it's just better to not ask. The reality is, if this is you, I want you to stop for a moment and think about when you are giving to somebody else. When you are of assistance to somebody else, how does that make you feel? Now, I'm going to take a guess here that the answers would be, it makes me feel good, it makes me feel useful, it makes me feel like I'm contributing, it makes me feel like I am loved by the person that I am giving the service to, it makes me feel a whole lot better about who I am as a person. I like to be of service to others. I want to be able to help. I want people to ask me. I want people to know that I'm reliable, caring, compassionate, empathetic, that I can get things done and I can be the go-to person that can help them. And so the chances are you're experiencing all of that when someone asks you to help them. So here's the tough love sledgehammer. How can you deny that in another the opportunity for them to heal whatever is going on for them. Maybe they want to feel useful. That's healing. 
Maybe they want to feel loved. That's healing. Maybe they want to feel validated. That's healing. Or clever. Or kind. Or worthy. How can you deny them that opportunity to experience that? So when you are incapable of saying, yes, I would like your help, you are denying that person that moment to feel all of those gorgeous things about themselves. When we allow another person to help us, we are validating who they are and you don't know what they're going through. They may really need to feel all of these things in this moment. They may desperately need you to say, yes, I would like your help. Thank you. I want you to really sit in this because if you want to be somebody that changes the world and the world is your world, the people that you are connecting with on a daily basis, if you really want to be spreading the love potion everywhere, if you want the world to be kinder, more compassionate, more supportive, more loving, then it has to start with you allowing that into your life. It's all well and good to be somebody that says, I am feeling so good about myself and I like who I am because I am of service to others. But I challenge you, can you allow others to be of service to you? And I really want you to get this lesson because you might have a fear around, oh, but she's so selfish, or you might have a fear around she's always asking for things to be done. You don't necessarily even have to ask. You have to listen to the people that offer their service. People are offering all the time. They will say things like, how are you? You say, I'm so busy. And the next thing out of their mouth will be, well, is there anything I can do to help? Or please let me know if I can help at any point. And likely the next voice in your head is saying, oh, they're just saying that to be nice. They don't really mean it. But now that you are starting to understand what it is that they get from that, the amazing feelings of validation, of being of service, of feeling good about themselves, how can you not say, yes, please? One of the most beautiful wisdom gathering experiences I believe you can achieve is when you do give another the opportunity to give. So the art of receiving is so incredibly important in the ripple effect of healing throughout our planet. I've chosen a couple of YouTube clips that I want to share with you. They really were the top few that were floating around the internet of great acts of kindness. But particularly to show you how vibration, attraction, cause and effect really can play out when you can master the art of receiving to make great change on our planet. Mrs. Bashaw, a high school head teacher in New Hampshire, had unfortunately been diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of cancer, but she'd still put on a brave face and went into school and carried on with her life as normal. Then, one day at school, the students gathered up and presented her with $8,000 towards the cost of her treatment. The head teacher was completely overwhelmed by the random gift and the small sacrifice all the students had made. See, the students knew about it all along and were supposed to be going on a class outing. But instead of going, they all decided to give the money for their trip to the teacher instead. The student said the head teacher is completely selfless, and that made them want to be selfless too. Mrs. Vashel will be taking leave for her cancer treatment, but said it was a beautiful experience as an educator, as she worked so hard to try and help cultivate kids who care. She was extremely proud of her students for being the embodiment of all that she taught. The students have said that this was only the beginning, and that they'll continue to raise funds for their beloved head teacher. Now imagine if Mrs. Vasher had an issue with receiving. I think this is pretty easy to imagine. So we've got this gorgeous high school teacher who is so heart-centered and committed with selfless acts on a daily basis to all of her students. It would be so easy for her to go into perhaps low self-worth. Perhaps she didn't feel worthy of being able to receive this gift from her students. Or what if she couldn't cope with the guilt of the students not going on their excursion or their trip away, which was where they originally sourced the first lot of money to support her? It's pretty easy to imagine someone saying, I can't accept this. I really want you to go on your trip. 
But no, she had the self-worth of being able to receive. But not just that, I wonder if Mrs. Vasha really did have a great understanding of how important it was for her to receive from her students so that they were not being denied the amazing feelings within themselves of what it feels like to give. A young lady named Dominique had just finished her night out and realised she had lost her bank card and couldn't pay for a taxi home. A homeless man named Robbie saw her situation and offered her three pounds, the only money he had in the world, which he gladly gave away in return for knowing Dominique would get home safely. Robbie had been homeless for seven months and was finding it very difficult to get a job due to having no address. Dominique woke up the next morning and was so touched that someone with so little could give away his very last penny to help her, so she decided to repay his kindness. She set up a GoFundMe page for Robbie in the hope of raising £500. Turns out it went viral and eventually raised over £30,000. But there was one small problem. Robbie was nowhere to be seen. Dominique spent four nights driving around Preston, UK, asking people if they'd seen Robbie. And it turns out that Robbie was known as a local Samaritan and had been known to return wallets and give his clothes to cold passers-by. She eventually found Robbie and gave him the money and he was so happy that he could eventually reclaim his life. Dominique thinks that Robbie may have just restored her faith in humanity. There is just so much to love about this character, Robbie. And he is clearly is the local Good Samaritan. However, I also want to suggest that he really is an Earth Angel. We recently did a podcast on Earth Angels, so if you haven't had a listen to that, check that one out. An Earth Angel we so often believe is going to be, you know, yes, yeah, somebody that comes to us in that time of need. But I doubt that many of us would really picture an Earth Angel as being a homeless person. And the ability to be able to give their last three pounds not knowing where their next scent is coming from, not knowing how they're going to be able to feed themselves, is quite an incredible act of kindness. However, I wonder if Robbie really does feed his soul off his act of giving. And I wonder when perhaps we have so little in life, when we're in a situation like Robbie's, all that we do have left, is the ability to be able to tap into the emotions that are going to make us feel good. And clearly Robbie being the Good Samaritan makes him feel good. I'm sure that gives him a lot of great self-worth, self-respect, self-love. In a time when we could easily be doing a big beat-up job on ourselves, you know, when we're not kicking the goals that society expects us to kick, it's a really cool way of being able to feel good about ourselves. But I also love that the crowdfunding that occurred after Robbie gave her his three pounds, that crowdfunding that resulted in, I think it was 15,000 pounds, how many more people were able to feel good about themselves by tapping into this story and giving money? Psychologists will often help people who are suffering from depression or if they are feeling even suicidal one of the tools that they will get them to do immediately is to do an act of kindness for someone else. It is a very quick emotion shifter. And this has been displayed so beautifully in this particular example of giving. When we really do understand how easy it is for us to turn our own emotions around through the act of kindness, through the acts of giving, we can never again deny another that opportunity. So it now forces us to be in a situation where somebody wants to do something for you, you have no choice now but to say yes, because otherwise you don't know what you are denying them that they may most need in this moment. Cara Grace Duggan wanted to buy a second-hand smoothie maker for her mother, who had been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer the previous year. Her mum had been suffering with nausea due to the cancer, so she thought it would be a great way to get nutrition into her. Cara specifically needed the 900 watt version, so she could also add the supplements that would be grinded into the juices, but she couldn't afford the £130 price tag of a new one. She found an ad for a second-hand Nutribullet smoothie maker on Gumtree and proceeded to contact the seller. She asked if they could post it from London to Belfast. 
She also explained that it was to help with her mother's cancer treatment by helping to easily consume nutrients and supplements. The heartwarming response she got back left her overwhelmed. The seller said they were giving it to her for free and that they were also covering the postage. She then received a second message from the seller, saying they had just bought her a brand new one and it was available to pick up instantly at a local store in Belfast. Cara, close to tears, replied with thank you, why are you so kind? To which she received, don't say thanks to me, in fact, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Cara cried when she picked up the Nutribullet due to the kindness she had received from someone she had never even met. The powerful words in this particular story are from the giver of the Nutribullet, who said... Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this. And I hope that you too take from this just how important it is that you give others the opportunity to do for you. Kindness has so much good stuff coming out from it. It sounds so basic to say, I'm kind or oh, that person's kind and unfortunately in Western society it's actually got a bit of a bum rap for not being very cool. I couldn't remember going for an interview way back in the 80s and they asked me to share a few qualities of what I felt were my strengths and one of the things I said was kind and I'll never forget they rolled their eyes and said we don't really see that as a strength. I couldn't believe it. Well, thankfully, one random act of kindness at a time, that is changing the world. But there's some really cool science behind kindness. And I wanted to share this with you. Did you know that kindness can be taught? We're not just born with it. It can be taught. So if people have been born with it and lost their way, it can be taught again. So a researcher from the University of Wisconsin says it's kind of like weight training. We found that people can actually build up their compassion muscle and respond to others suffering with care and a greater desire to help. So that's good news. Another fact that I love is about oxytocin. Now, as we know, oxytocin is the bonding hormone. It's the love home hormone. It's where the baby bonds to the mother, the mother to the baby. It's the lovers bonding together. Well, apparently, witnessing acts of kindness produces oxytocin. Now, this is really cool because this means you don't even have to be doing the act or receiving the act. You can just witness it. Apparently, it lowers or it aids in lowering blood pressure and improving our overall heart health. Funny about that. Get the old heart into it. So oxytocin also, of course, increases our self-esteem and our optimism. And it's extra helpful when we're either anxious or shy or in a challenging social situation. Now, another great fact about the positive effects of kindness is that it's experienced in the brain of every single person who witnesses it, improving their mood and making them significantly more likely to pay it forward. So this fact alone means that one good deed, like in a crowded area, it can create a huge ripple effect and improve hundreds of people's lives or hundreds of people's days, I should say, or moments. And then, of course, if they in turn are motivated to pay it forward and so on we go. So kindness is incredibly powerful. It's kind of also like the brain's natural painkiller. So engaging in acts of kindness produces endorphins. What that means is that if you are in a flat mood or a negative mood or maybe you're feeling anxious or you're feeling depressed by doing an act of kindness even if you've got to dig really deep to do it it is going to produce the endorphins that are going to help you to have a natural painkiller perpetually kind people have 23 percent less cortisol which is the stress hormone and age two times slower than the average population now, what's interesting here is that highly sensitive people suffer from massive amounts of cortisol being released. So I think that it's no coincidence that every single highly sensitive person I've ever met or spoken to also is deeply kind. So it's kind of like Mother Nature's way of balancing. All right, if you're going to be highly sensitive and you're going to be living life with lots of cortisol, the stress hormone, then we're going to balance this out by giving you the gift of kindness because that is going to reduce your cortisol and it is going to help you to live a more gracious life. 
Kindness can also jumpstart a cascade of positive social consequences. Once people start leading you to like you and appreciate you, to offer gratitude, it also leads people to reciprocate in, the, in your times of need. So when you give it out, they're more likely to come back to you when you need it. So helping others to satisfy like a really basic human need for connecting with others or smiling or with thankfulness and valued friendship, those sorts of things is going to really help you. Doing acts of kindness reduces anxiety. During a four-week study done at the University of British Columbia, researchers assigned people with high levels of anxiety to do kind acts for other people at least six times a week. The researchers found that doing nice things for people led to a significant increase in people's positive moods. It also led to an increase in relationship satisfaction and a decrease in social avoidance in socially anxious individuals. Very powerful. Researcher Elizabeth Dunn found that those who spend money on others reported much greater happiness than those who spent it on themselves. Helping others increases energy. About half of the recipients in one study report that they feel stronger and more energetic after helping others. Many also reported feeling calmer and less depressed with increased feelings of self-worth. That's by Christine Carter. According to the Greater Good Science Centre, researchers believe practicing random acts of kindness makes you feel happier because it makes you think more highly of yourself and you become more aware of positive social interactions. So that's kind of another way for saying self-respect, self-acceptance, self-love. A 2010 Harvard Business School survey of happiness in 136 countries found that people who are altruistic, and in this case people who were generous financially, such as with charitable donations, were by far the happiest overall. Now I know they've mentioned money in this, finances, but I have got a whole list of ways that you can be generous in your random acts of kindness that doesn't involve money. So let's get to that now. So my all-time favourite one, which I have mentioned on other podcasts, but I'm going to mention it now, is to send random text messages to people that are in your phone. And it doesn't matter whether it's your best friend, a family member, or just an acquaintance. But with these text messages, I want you to send one of appreciation for the role that they play in your life. And the more out of the blue and unexpected it is, the greater the feeling of receiving that is going to be. You can take it one step further and send videos. You know, use technology. Technology is brilliant for this kind of thing. It is so easy to hit record for a video on your phone and then send that to somebody, particularly perhaps to people who might be feeling lonely or they're going through a hard time. I recently did this to somebody that I know is going through a marriage breakdown a marriage breakup, I should say. And it was just one of, I care for you, you're wonderful, I'm here if you need me. But they get to see your face. And of course, then we're reading the body language, we're reading the beautiful heart-centered intent. Another one that I know I've mentioned before, but here it is again, is the sticky post-it notes. Grab a stack of those and just write words on it like smile, or you're beautiful, or you make a difference, or a very powerful one, you matter, and place them anywhere you can. If you go to the gym, put them on every single locker. If you are at a park, put them on the park benches, at the petrol station. You can put them on newspaper stacks at the supermarket, on magazine covers. I don't know if you get told off for that or not, but gee, it would be a pretty uh, unhappy person that would want to tell you off for doing that. Get creative about that. That's a really cool, fun, easy thing to be doing. Make a playlist of songs that you find are kind or beautiful or uplifting. Just create your own playlist and then email it to everyone you know so they can get those songs and have a listen too. Babysit for free. There are so many people these days that are time poor, their relationships suffer, or maybe they're a single parent and they don't have time or resources to take time out for themselves. So just offer to look after their children for a while for them, for free. 
something my nana used to do. She used to raise money for a hospital that her daughter actually lived in, my auntie. And so she was a keen gardener, but she didn't have a lot of money. But my nana used to spend the whole year striking plants. Now, I'm not a real green thumb, but I understand that certain plants, you can take cuttings from them, put them in water for a period of time and the root system will grow and then you need to pot them. So you do need to have a bit of money, I guess, for the pots. She used to recycle them though. She used to ask people to give them back to her all the time. She was asking for donations of potting soil or um, pot, pot, the actual pots that the plants go in. And she used to raise thousands of dollars for the hospital doing that every year but I thought that would be a really cool thing to be able to give somebody something living it might be really nice for somebody perhaps who doesn't have much of a garden or doesn't have time for a garden share on social media videos of kindness or faces of kind people you know you sometimes see these National Geographic videos that click through of all these beautiful images and they just make you feel so good faces of such kindness start putting those through your social media in fact why not go further on social media why not include a compliment in every single social media post that you do or every single email so you're still going to be doing the same intent of sharing whatever it is you wanted to share in the email or the social media post, but you're going to add a genuine compliment in there. Encourage others with a smile or a comment or appreciation. You know, sometimes we see people that are struggling. It might be, might be a mother with a toddler that's throwing a tantrum and you can just see that they are just at their wits end. Just smile and give a great compliment, you know, just know that it's all okay. And my final one, listen. Listen more to others. I think that's a beautiful act of kindness. And now it's time to give some ideas of random acts of kindness for those of you who have an abundance of finances. So let's spend some money paying it forward. I guess one of my all-time favorites, which I've mentioned many, many times, is Kiva, K-I-V-A dot org. It's microfinancing where you are actually lending $25 to a business and they'll pay it back. Well, the vast majority do. However, what I tend to do is once the money's been paid back to me, I then reinvest it and give it to somebody else to build their business. I think that's a really cool one. Another one that has really grown in popularity, particularly over the last two years, I think it was about two years ago that I first heard about a coffee shop that had set up a system where you could buy a coffee for somebody in need. So you'd go and order your coffee and you pay you $5 or whatever for a coffee and then you could actually give them an additional $5 and they would put it down as a purchased coffee for anybody that comes into the coffee shop and says, do you have a free cup of coffee that's been purchased that I could have, please? And they never asked questions. Now, traditionally, it would be for people that are perhaps homeless. However, it can be anybody. They didn't ask. You didn't have to.